Okay, ladies and gentlemen. If you look up at the title up there, I've got some, I want to talk about the Kevin Nash situation and now the news that WWE is considering a best, uh, best of three series next year for Cena and Rock. That's right. Now let's talk about the Kevin Nash situation first. Kevin Nash being released. Now Kevin Nash has gone on Twitter and trying to say it's legitimate by saying that he couldn't come financially to turn. All right. First of all, why? First of all, why would they release him? Hmm? He was under a Legends contract. He was apparently signed on screen to a superstar contract. And now he's being released. He was fired on screen, now he's released. Do you, is it me or am I the, is it me? It, it must be me because am I not the only one that sees that this is all storyline based? Am I not the only one that sees that? Huh? Am I not the only one that sees this entire situation is storyline based? Do I not see that? I mean, why would you suddenly involve Kevin Nash in one of your most hyped up, most personal storylines and feuds? Why would you have him come through the crowd at SummerSlam, cost CM Punk the match and, and the title? Why would you have him doing all this? Why would you give him his own Titan Tron, give him the NWO music? Why would you do all that and suddenly let him go? It don't make sense, folks. In all honesty to God, I'm pretty sure a lot of us probably know by now that this is nothing more than a work. It's a, it's a very good work, I'll give him that, because let's not forget something. WWE has pulled the wool over us before. Last year, despite how you feel about it, and I'm going to come out and say this, last year when they let Daniel Bryan go, let's be honest with ourselves, they didn't let Daniel Bryan go. They let him go storyline-wise, and then they brought him back in time for SummerSlam. It doesn't make sense. Why would you bring a guy back, at, back in time for SummerSlam if he's fired? Yeah, you'll say, well, he competed on all these shows and, you know, and all that. He competed on the independents. Yeah, he did compete on the independents, but let's face facts. How many of these major independent shows were dvd if you will, for DVD with him on it after he was a so-called release. Think about it, folks. Not many. In fact, none at all. That's why the whole Daniel Bryan thing last year was a work. A good work, because a lot of us fell for it, but it was a work. Same thing here with Kevin Nash. Nothing more than a work. All right? Heck, I have a friend at church who's a wrestling fan. And he said that as soon as CM Punk did that shoot promo he did a few weeks back, a month ago or so, oh, two weeks before, two weeks or so before he won Money in the Bank. Not money, won the Money in the Bank main event, the WWE Championship, if you will. Before he did that, after he did that work shoot promo, according to my friend, WWE saw how hot he was, it was right after that, and they knew they had to sign him on. Because they were going to let him go. But is that really, but is that true? Did they not already resign it? I mean, yeah, he appeared at an AAW event in Chicago. An independent show. Hey, that's great. 48 hours later, what's he showing up at? On Monday Night Raw. What does that tell you? It tells you it's a work. And WWE is good at it. They're good at making things seem real, naturally real, to the point that we'll buy. You don't think WWE's not going to go as far as to say, okay, Kevin, uh, go up here at this independent show, go up here, here, go up here, there. You think they're not going to tell him that right now? Do you not think they didn't tell Daniel Bryan that last year? It's all the work, folks. They just are doing this to make it seem real and legitimate. All right? That's my take on it. Now, here's my take on something else. Here's my take on the storyline that crit that uh, SETB, Steve Breach, 
the Chris Phoenix, and a lot of people are reporting on YouTube, courtesy of some wrestling news that they've heard. Now, rumors going around that The Rock is probably going to come back and compete as early as this November. That's definitely, if that's true, that's going to give the Survivor Series a bunch of buyouts. There's no doubt about it. But now the news is going around The WWE wants to take the main event, Rock Cena for WrestleMania, and they want to continue it until SummerSlam 2012. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means they want to see, apparently, according to what I understand, the plan is to go from WrestleMania, do one at Extreme Rules, do one at SummerSlam, just so they could find out, I guess, storyline-wise, who is the very best. Like, who's the man? Who's the WWE's legacy going to hang on, whether they're here or not? And honestly, here's what I say about it. I say the same thing a lot of people are saying. WWE, are you... Are you crazy? Rock versus Cena, Rock versus Cena is a once in a lifetime deal. Now I know a lot of people will say, well Rock versus Hogan at WrestleMania 18 was a once in a lifetime deal. Then they did a sequel a year or so later. Yes they did, but they waited a year, almost a year to do the next match. And it was, and it was at the pay-per-view before WrestleMania. If I was WWE, I would have said, hey, I want to put Rock versus Hogan Rock versus Hogan 2 at WrestleMania 19. That's what I would have done. But they did wait almost a year later to do it. You don't consider doing a best out of three matches deal within the first, within the four months, within the four months of the first match. You don't do it the following month. You don't do it at the SummerSlam match. No. If you're going to do another matchup between these two, you do it at WrestleMania the following year. Then, if you want to do a third and final match to see who's the best, you do it at the 30th, the 30th anniversary. It makes more sense. It makes it more anticipated. But planning to do it three, three pay-per-views in one year, it's ridiculous. It, it wears out the speciality of it. And that's what this kind of a match is, a special match. It's a special kind of event that defines ages and generations. They, you know, they use an old saying in sports, like, it's in sports when you've got something like this happening. It's like, it's like Frazier, it's like Joe Frazier versus, I don't know, Mayweather. It's like Frazier versus Mayweather. It's like Tyson versus Ali. Alright? It's stuff like that. It's like if you want to look at it from the NFL's perspective. It's like... It's like Joe Namath versus Peyton Manning. Baseball-wise, it's like Derek Jeter versus Mark McGuire. And it's happened, but you get my idea. Or Derek Jeter versus Babe Ruth. Okay? It's like, it's like Alex Rodriguez versus Mickey Mantle. Those are, this is what that kind of event is. It's like NBA-wise. It's like Kobe Bryant and LeBron James versus Larry Bird and Magic Johnson or Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan. That's the kind of match this is. And it only happens once in a lifetime. And if you want to continue it on, you don't do it within the next year, within the next month, or within the four, first four months, within the first eight months of the year. No, you don't do that. You wait a year. You bring it. You make it more special. You make people anticipate it. I mean, fans are anticipating this match. Have been anticipating this match for the longest of times. They've been, and now they're more anticipating it since it's been made official. And you know you could, and it, you know, and you could say you want to do it within a year because you don't know what's going to happen. Guess what? Guess what? If you can get The Rock to come in and do this match, 
at WrestleMania, then you can have them come in the following two years and do it at WrestleMania again. That's how I would do a best out of three situation. Wait year after year after year and build it up until you get to the 30th anniversary of WrestleMania. Then, at the 30th anniversary in Madison Square Garden, you see who is finally the best of all time. You finally see it. You finally let it take place. I mean, if you want to look from a wrestling aspect, if you will, it's like saying, I want to see who was the best between Lou Fez and Ric Flair. I want to see who the best was with Gene Ga uh, uh, Lou Gotch, or whatever his name is, and Bret the Hitman Hart. That's what this is about, folks. That's how big this thing is. And to me, you don't decide, hey, let's do two, let's do a best out of three series, series in one year. Let's have two more matches after the big epic one at WrestleMania. No. You want to do a best out of three series? You do it year after year. You do one match this year, you do the other match at WrestleMania 29, either it's in, whether it's here in Sap either it's here in the Bay or in Toronto. And then you do the next WrestleMania at Madison Square. Then you do the third and final one at Madison Square Garden at the 30th anniversary. That's how you do it. That's how you keep it special because you keep people anticipating it. But that's just my thoughts on this whole situation, on the news I've read. Like I said, give me, like I said, you know, the Kevin Nash deal, I believe, is a work. But, and this whole best out of three thing, the way I look at it, it's better off if you just wait a year, a year, a year. WrestleMania, next WrestleMania, and then follow WrestleMania. Because if you want to hype it up and it lives up to its hype, that's how you do it. So that's all I'm going to say. You tell me what you think. Comment down below, and I'll talk to you all later.